All righty, good evening, everyone. Sorry for the delay. Of course, we know how it works sometimes with these computers. They have a mind of their own. Nevertheless, we made it in. Greetings to everyone um, this evening. Welcome to our Tuesday evening Bible study. Um, uh, do apologize. Um, Bishop was not able to go live um, this afternoon. So we are here this evening and we're excited to be here to talk about um, leadership in this day and time, to talk about your purpose and just to challenge um, each other to move forward in the things that God would have us to move forward in. So with me tonight, I have Elgin. Yeah, Elgin sending a shout hey. out and Bishop may be joining us shortly. But nevertheless, we want you to um, just, just tag a friend, tag a neighbor, mm -hmm. um, tag your family members, tell them to come on in tonight because you, um, they're going to be challenged tonight. So we are so excited um, to be here tonight to talk about um, leadership in this day and time. You know, Bishop Bush has been um, talking about the seven principles um, for voting. And because we're just we're just coming through and um, really not coming through Elgin. We're in the we're still in the midst of yeah, this election season. So on very that much. note, guys, I want to encourage you to continue to pray, to continue to pray um, that God will continue to have his way throughout this whole process, mm -hmm. whatever his will is, let his will be done. And then to, to make sure that we are binding the hand of the enemy and no weapon formed against the, the plans and purposes of God will prosper in this season. Um, so I know we've, we've prayed through a lot and God has brought us through a lot um, during this time, but I want to encourage you to continue to pray. On um, So on that note, guys, we just want to grab a hold to lessons learned from number 45, um, what we hope to gain from number 46, and then to incorporate that into um, principles of leadership, principles in leading, you know, because, you know, we have learned so, I have learned, I can speak for myself so much through this whole election process. I've learned so much about leadership in the last four years and more or less um, the type of leader that I don't want to be as a representative or using your word, Elgin, as an, as an ambassador for Christ. Um, what type of leader I don't want to be. So we're just gonna pick up here, guys. And the reason why we're going in this direction because um, those of you who are members of Crown you know that Bishop Bush has challenged us to step out into the things that, that we want to do, that we believe God is leading us to do, to start making way for the hand of God to come in and lay his hand on top of ours and cause everything that we set for our hands to do to prosper. So we want to talk about how to jumpstart that process tonight, how to keep moving, how to build momentum how to um, continue to move forward, even in the midst of the odds, in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of trials, in the midst of different things that will come to hinder us. Uh, one thing we can learn, Elgin, from number 45 is persistence. Persistent. Yeah. We can learn from number 45 how to be persistent, how to really go after something you want, um, you know, we, of course, we don't want it for our own personal gain. Everything we're going after is supposed to be to lift up um, the kingdom of God. But, you know, just learning valuable lessons of persistence. And I remember um, going into four years ago, Elgin, going into this election. To be honest, I never thought that number 45 would have won. But knowing his history of being persistent, you know, um, and maybe not all the way doing things the godly way, but, you know, just, just the word persistent alone um, 
has gotten him to where <laughs> we're to be number 45. Go ahead, Elgin. I know you got some things to say. Well, no, I think it's a great opening, uh, Cindy, and, and hello to everyone out there listening and tuning in and just to 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 uh, to reflect what Cindy was saying there in the very beginning. Please, 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 please uh, like, share uh, on Facebook, let your friends know that we are on here on live. Um, one of the things we are definitely interested in doing the Crown Kingdom Cultural Center uh, in regards to the word of God that's going forth from this ministry is making sure as many people as possible have an opportunity to hear the word of faith uh, that is being taught from the word of God uh, by our man of God, Bishop Finance Bush Jr., uh, by our senior pastor as well, Lady Denise Bush. So please do that for us because um, it's an opportunity to, to, to witness, to evangelize, and to get the word out. Um, you know, it's amazing. Uh, I think they said Stacey Abrams was able to, to garner uh, or gather up to 800,000 people to register to vote by getting a word out, by yeah. getting a word yeah. out. Yeah. And so likewise here with this broadcast that we're doing on a regular basis, we want to get the word out. We need you to get your Stacey Abrams on and go out there and let people know to listen, listen, yeah. listen, listen. She was saying, vote, 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 register, register, register. We're saying share, 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 like, 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 listen, listen, listen. Uh, just so get that word out. You know, we want to, yeah. we want to grow and we want people to grow with us. But anyways, um, you know, going back to the topic, I really believe, um, I really know that the hand of God is involved what's happening in our society that he always has been. Um, there's a scripture, matter of fact, I believe it's in Isaiah, as for Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Sometimes we forget the kind of God we serve. We forget who he is. We forget his character. We forget uh, how, how awesome he is. But in Isaiah 46 and 10, uh, I'm reading for the King James Version. It says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. He goes on to describe, and I love, I love God sometimes he's extremely poetic when he's talking through the prophets and he's talking through the scripture. Poetically, he says, calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. When it comes down to the will of God, the purposes of God, God's purpose shall stand. God's purposes shall be fulfilled. It doesn't, you got listen, he's a ravenous bird. A ravenous bird, a raven, uh, or a ravenous bird is a bird that eats off the, eats off of dead things. It's, it's, I'll get the lowest of all birds if I have to that come from a far off country to come and accomplish my will and put things in the position so I can do what I purpose to do. And so we have to be okay with, uh, uh, Cindy, with, um, if he does what I want him to do, I'm okay. If he doesn't do what I want him to do, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we know that his will is being fulfilled. That's our faith in God. That's our love for him and that's his love for us. You know, so I say that because I've been watching and listening. Um, as you said, people, some people say we're, the election is over, you know, um, and, and others who are paying attention say we're still very much in the midst of the election. My hometown, D.C., they're planning, I think it's November the 12th or November the 18th. A million man MAGA, Make America Great Again March. That's a million supporters of, of, of the current presidency that are going to be marching in Washington, D.C. This thing is not over yet. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we need to make sure we, we, we gather our hearts, um, make sure that our souls don't run away with us, make sure that we are, because if we do, we're unable to hear the word of God. We're unable to hear, unable to hear the voice of God, who is here for us to give us direction through these times um, being as non-trying or as difficult as they may be for us. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want, I want, to, I want to put that out there because, mm -hmm. and this, this, is, this, is, this is a statement of, of proactivity. Let me say it that way. Mm -hmm. This is a statement say, get your heart, be proactive with your heart now, be proactive with your voice, be proactive with your listening, um, um, be critical in your hearing, uh, don't be cynical, but listen so that you can understand what is the God wants you to do next? Because he's giving us instructions as he's, as he's, as he's uh, uh, garrisoning out his will for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the mankind of the society, not just of this nation, but of this world. So listen closely, listen attentively, make sure your heart is, 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 is what's what I'm looking for, Cindy, that you have, that, you're, that you got it under control, that, you, that you're not yeah. letting it run away from like wild horses. Um, because in this season, um, there are gonna be some things that even that we're going to hear and some things that we're going to see, and some both. 
Um, so that we'll participate in if we're not careful, it will cause the rhythm of our heart to skip a beat. But we have to be in tune with the heart of God. And this season, more so than any other season, really every day of our life, it should be what I'm about to say. But in this season in particular, our heartbeat must be the heartbeat of God in this season. Not the heartbeat of our, of our desires, the heartbeat of, you know, the things that are so much our aspirations, but the heartbeat of God. I have news for you. The heartbeat of God is concerned about your aspirations. Yes. The heartbeat yes. of God is concerned about your dreams. So we put our heart in his heart, and yes. our heart to beat for us. We can walk circumspectly knowing that we are ready for anything that may yes. come upon the face of the earth. Yes, I, I so agree. I so agree with you, Elgin. Um, this is that type of season. Um, we should not be caught off guard. We are going to have to be um, vigilant and we're going to have to be sober, sober, even as the word of God admonishes us to be vigilant and sober during this time, because it's so easy to get caught up mm -hmm. in the wrong things, maybe even for the right reason but it's the wrong yeah. thing, it's That's the good. wrong approach. So I have been just, um, and, and I don't know why, but this scripture has just gripped my spirit because God has been dealing with me about being in the world and but not of the world and understanding mm -hmm. that there are different responsibilities. You have uh, responsibilities being in the world and then you have responsibilities, I mean, being of the world, being in the world, and then that's different from not making sure you're not becoming of the world. So that's what I'm trying to say. So we do have a responsibility to, to vote and to make sure our voice and the voice of God is heard whenever there's opportunity. And voting is one of, the, uh, is, is a way to express you know, um, God's way and God's will. But, you know, we have duties being in this world, but we can't let those duties cause us to get mm -hmm. caught up and we become of the world. When I say of the world, doing everything the world is doing, okay, it's okay to have a gun. I'm not anti-guns. But what mm -hmm. is your reason for now in this season, this time going to purchase a gun? Mm -hmm. You know, because God is the same God today, yet yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he kept you on yesterday, mm -hmm. he will keep you today. So I'm not saying you don't have to buy one, but what I am saying is what, to back up what Elgin is saying, make sure you're hearing from God mm -hmm. in this season, um, because if not, you will miss God. Um, I have been sharing with a few people, I was coming home from Atlanta on Sunday, and um, I was driving and, and listening to the music and I, I got so caught up, I was in the right lane and all of the traffic slowed down. And when I looked up, I was like, gosh, why is this traffic going so slow? And what, when I looked up, I was in the middle of a parade from, from number 45. You know, right. if a helicopter or airplane was looking down, they would have sworn I was a part of it, you know, because I meant wow. yeah, half of the procession in front of me and the other half behind me, you know, and it, for a minute, it just kind of, you know, gripped my spirit and the Holy Spirit said, I got you. You have released angels to cover you, the front, the side, the back, whatever, you know, I, I am with you, but you know, for a moment there, I was like, gosh, you know, one of the things I was concerned about with this election is riots and people thinking, feeling the need to take revenge because their candidate wasn't chosen. You know, it's not that serious, to be honest. It's not that serious. Let whoever God has allowed in that position to do what they're going to do, we have to keep on living. So, you know, one of the things I was concerned about was I don't want to get caught up in no stuff like that, you know, because they're, they're not my father. They're not my friend. I just, I'm just doing my civic duty. So I don't want to, yeah. but when I got caught up in that little pro um, parade, I was like, oh my God, they could block me in and move me over to the side of the highway and some craziness, but God kept me and I smiled and I put my foot on that gas stone, so went on past everybody in that left lane. But these times are crucial 
But Elgin, the other thing we want to make sure that we don't do, you know, is not get so caught up that we get out of alignment. We get out of alignment. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. So we want to make sure that we're still staying safe and precautious, you know, doing whatever we have to do. The pandemic was one distraction that tried to take us off course. Then we came into social injustice and, and, and everything with, with all of that to try to take us off course, meaning distractions, which sometimes will hinder us from moving forward. And then now this election. So what I really just wanted to take the time tonight is to um, take a moment to encourage everyone to refocus. Yes. Don't get so caught up into what's happening until you yes. lose focus on what it is that God is calling you to do. If you are a member of Crown, I know, um, especially a leader or a director, we have been challenged to put some things before God and to make some things happen in the midst of this pandemic. And distractions just keep on coming, things to take us off course. So we got to fight through that. And that's why I said, um, we don't want a bad spirit, but a few lessons that we can take from number 45, he is relentless to get what he wants. Right. And we as children of God, we got to be relentless in, in our pursuit of God's purpose for our life. He is the perfect example of what will happen if a nation of people choose to sleep. Wow. 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 While, like you're, while we're sleeping, he's working. He was working all the time. That's right. That's right. You know, even in the parable and the scriptures, it talks about uh, the farmer, the agriculturist that goes out and sows the seed in the farm. It says, scriptures goes and says, while he was sleeping, he said the enemy came in. Um, and started messing up the, the, the whole harvest and messing up the season, trying to, to take things and move them out of order while he was sleeping, while he was unaware, while his perspective was off. And something you were saying, um, Cindy, I was, I was thinking um, ahead for what I was going to say once you finished. And uh, it, what you said was kind of congruent with what I was, was, where I was going. You know, at least about five, six years ago, I don't know the numbers now because things have changed with technology. We have so many internet, online, television, radio stations. But uh, legitimate um, mainstream media uh, companies to include uh, radio, television, um, to include satellite radio, over 2,400 major media companies in the world owned by three major families in the world. I want you to listen to that over 2,400. This is about five, six years ago. Um, I don't know what the numbers are now, but over 2,400 owned by Three major families, three major families control 2,400 different outlets for media and ways to access and to manipulate, control, and to switch your perspective of your soul. Three major families. Now, what if they're all friends? Mm. <laughs> what if they're all buddy buddies? What if they all sit down and have lunch together, those three families, mm. and have lunch and say, here's what we want the people to know. Right. Here's what we want to show the people. So, so you cannot believe the report of the world. You have to put your trust. You have to believe the report of the Lord. The perspective, you talked about the perspective. You said if there had been the helicopter, Cindy, above mm. you while you were riding that car, traveling back from Atlanta, while that procession was going on, they would have swore up and down. You were part of the situation. You are part of the parade. You are part of the procession. And you're like, no, not so. But that's the perspective. That's the perspective that someone else was legitimately able to have uh, from their vantage point. Just yeah. because someone's vantage point gives a perspective that may or may not be congruent with your thought process does not mean that even their perspective is accurate. That's right. That's right. It does not mean that their perspective is accurate. Mm. But we do know one thing for sure, sons and daughters of the Most High God. When it comes to the divine perspective, of our father, of our creator. He is true, he is accurate, yeah. and he cannot lie, he cannot lie. So are you going to listen to the person or the system that's known for lying? I'm gonna help you out, Donald Trump. Fake news, <laughs> I'm 
Are you going to listen to someone who's able to tell you not just what happened yesterday, what's happening now, but what's about to happen tomorrow? See, the weather reporters, they forecast. You know, they say rain and tomorrow is sunshine. Oh, we missed it. When God forecasts to you what's about to happen next, sweetie, he don't miss. <laughs> so the perspective that you want to have is his perspective, the divine perspective. And able to have that perspective, once again, you have to have hearing that is not disinterested, hearing that is not cynical, hearing that is, that is tuned in and literally ready, willing, and able to hear his voice and prompt to do and prompt to move and prompt to move swiftly when he speaks to you. That's the perspective that we have to have right now, saints of God. It's not the, it's not the perspective of the world. Be careful. We go, to, we go to our jobs. We get on the phone. We go on social media. And we become influenced. Influenza, like the flu. It's like a virus. It starts spreading. And we start listening to everybody saying. And then next thing you know, we feel the way they feel. And we don't even know why we feel that way. We start feeling things that are totally contrary to our faith. So listen. God is not about sickness. He ain't about the flu. And he ain't trying to give you no virus. No. He is trying to give you clear, concise instructions mm -hmm. on what to do next. Mm -hmm. And so our prayers must be, Father, you know, uh, we got the broadcast tonight. And I'm, I'm, be, I'm be very transparent. I just got back myself from Tennessee. I'm still trying to, you know, shake the cobwebs. So I took a little nap. I almost didn't make the broadcast from time. I got it about five, seven minutes before seven, I think, got in the room. We had some technical difficulties. Part of me was like, yes, I can get these cobwebs at my head. And what I want to say to you is this. My, my perspective was kind of messed up because there was so much going on around me. It's as simple as this child of God. I said, Cindy and I both said, we said, simple prayer, Father, give us wisdom. You wake up tomorrow morning, Father, give me wisdom. You confront a situation you don't know what to do, Father, give me wisdom. He says, if you ask him for wisdom, he upbraids not. He, he does not hold it back. He gives to all men liberally. And so it's as simple as asking God for wisdom, no deep and profound. You don't, sister, you ain't even got to speak in tongues on this one. Just say, Father, give me wisdom. And the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom will come and grace you with wisdom for the situation. And right now, right now, my friends, we need wisdom for these very trying days and these very trying times that we're facing right now. Um, be of good courage. Don't be afraid. Be fearful. Fear not. Know that God is with us. But we just want you to be prepared. We want you like a surfer on a surfboard. We want you to see the wave coming for We want you to ride this wave out. We don't want you to tumble in the sea. If you do, we know God is good. He's going to pick you up and get you back on the surfboard again. But we want you to be able to ride this thing out to the very end. And so everybody that's around you, your friends are watching like a surfboarder. They're watching the surfer. Woo, did you see her ride that wave? We want people to say, whoa, did you see how he rolled through the situation? What's going on in civil rights and, and this election? Did, did you see how she handled the situation? Oh my, man, how did you do? Can you, watch this. Can you teach me to surf like you? Can you teach me <laughs> to manage my emotions and my situations the way you did through the situation? Mm -hmm. The way you did through this national pandemic? Teach me, where did you get this from? Now, we're right where God needs us to be and an opportunity in a position to be a witness mm -hmm. for the kingdom of God. Amen. Perspective is gonna be everything for us right now, folks, yes. perspective. Yes, and you're gonna to have to know in order to maintain a right or a righteous perspective, a perspective that aligns with the word of God, you are going to have to know what the word of God says. Other than that, it's so easy to get caught up in the emotionalism of right. things. So we're going to have to stay prayerful. We're going to have to stay before God because again, this is not the end, but more importantly, yes, we have everything, a lot going on centered around this election. There is a lot going on, but apart from that, you have some things going on in your life and you need God's attention. You need God's hand to touch those things. So um, in, order, in order to gain that perspective Elgin is talking about, again, um, just to reiterate, reiterate, we're gonna have to stay in tune with the spirit of God. Hearing during this time is so important. Um, I, I, I have a scripture before me, um, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, um, which admonishes us not to just to be hasty, 
to take on someone else's perspective or someone else's opinion. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You know, so a lot of times, you know, we get caught up in the hype. But God said, wait a minute, take a step back, hear the whole matter. Because he who answer before hearing the whole matter is considered a fool. So we don't want to be a fool and right. fool do a whole lot of things that they end up regretting later. Have you ever made a foolish decision? You know, mm -hmm. you make that decision, you regret it later. So we want to operate in that spirit of wisdom that Elgin is, is talking to us about and, um, and praying, you know, of course, we're going to pray for our nation. We're going to pray for our church family, our pastors, We're going to pray for our leaders and, and um, both um, in government, our spiritual leaders. We want to pray for our family, you know, and we want to pray that God cover every, everything and everybody. So you just want to keep things lifted up in prayer. Don't take anything for granted during this season. Don't even take for granted right. the power of your words, the power of the spoken. One of the things, and, and like I said, I wanted just to elaborate on lessons learned tonight from number 45 and looking at number 46, how he has presented himself so far. And one of the things I like, the, what, what I'm liking about number 46 so far, you know, and I always say this, there's some, some, some evil in every good person and there is some good in every evil person. So no one is perfect. But one of the things I'm learning, because I love watching leadership. I love watching leaders, you know, because I am a leader. Um, but one of the things I'm learning from number 46 is that he has the agenda set before him of things that he's wanting to accomplish. So his focus has turned toward his purpose for being in office. And he is not spending a lot of time um, dealing with the distractions of who's not giving up the White House, who is picketing or, or rioting around or, right. or trying to stir up a bunch of negative things. He's not focused on that. He's like, I'm claiming this seat. I'm claiming this position is mine. And I'm moving forward with my administration. So that is how we have to take life off. So we cannot get caught up looking at everything that's happening around us. Once right. you know your purpose and what God has called you to do, you got to you got to let it, all the negativity go and start focusing in on what it is that I'm supposed to do. Right. And I totally agree with Elgin. Um, just paraphrasing, in this season, guys, we got to be salt. Yes. We got to be light. Yes, we got to be the seasoning that God has called us to be. We cannot handle things from a worldly, carnal, emotional perspective. And I can, you know, and I will take it a, a step further and just, just speak prophetically. When If you take the challenge to handle things the way God has ordained or, or the way the word um, commands us to, there's going to be a blessing in the end for you. Because mm -hmm. God said, um, there he command the blessings. Where there is that's strength right. and where there mm -hmm. is unity, that's where the blessing is. So we got to be a promoter of unity. Take yes. your stance and stay there. People won't always agree with you. I know someone that I love in the gospel. But when I ask that person, how do you feel about the outcome of everything? He proceeded to tell me I didn't vote. Someone I respect. Why didn't you vote? You know, he said because his strength and his, his trust is in God and he's not getting caught up in that. Well, I, I had a stance on that long before having that conversation. So God gave me the opportunity to say, let me break some things down to you. And I respect your knowledge and I respect your intellect and I respect your education. And most of all, I enjoyed the conversations with you as a man of God. But guess what? This time I beg the differ. 
You know, mm-hmm. this, this, this time I beg the different. If God was going to do all the work for us, and if God just wanted us just to never, ever do anything, participate in anything, guess what? He wouldn't have made us. Right. Because if you don't have anything to do, then you don't need to be here. So you do have well, a responsibility. Go ahead, Elgin. Well, it goes, it goes all the way back to Old Testament. You know, uh, God was trying to lead his people. Um, as we're saying now, we were saying now in this broadcast, you know, listen to the voice of God, let the spirit of God lead you. He wanted to be that same voice for his people in the Old Testament. But we, they, our ancestors, they were the ones that said, no, we want to be like all the other nations. Send us a king that we can see. We want somebody we can see. To, and so, and as time went on, you know, God was appointing the kings through the prophets. And as time continued to go on, then we started voting and government came into play. We have the system that we asked for. We have in place here in, in, the, in the natural realm, we have what we've asked God for. And so now, because it's what we've asked for, and we have dominion here on earth, it's something that we've established through our perfect, through our will, should I say, our permissive will. So now it's, it's it's permitted for us to participate in it, in the system. It's the one we ask for, mm-hmm. you know. Um, now I, I will also I will I will say this, you know. So I know some people, um, as the gentleman you just you brought out, um, you know, he's not the only one that didn't vote, um, and, and felt a certain way. I I you know I voted. You have you have the right to vote, you have the right not to vote. Um, but you know, you have the right to participate in your own destiny too. Yeah. So, um, yes, you know, right. so, you know, we don't anybody to feel, um, any which way or out of source if they did not vote, uh, we don't want to feel that kind of way, but at the same time, keep in mind, sometimes that vote is, a, is an awesome way. My candidate didn't win four years ago. How I know I'm going to win this for these four years. Your vote is a way that we can, is a way we can poll and measure and get a register of which direction, what trend we're setting, what trend we're going in. So if it doesn't work out the way you didn't work out, at least we know we have your vote, your tally to add into, you know, what we need to do four years from now. So make your voice be heard when you're given the opportunity to speak up. Speak up, speak loud, speak strong. Let folks know where you stand on issues. Um, and if it means going to a, a ballot and voting and placing your vote in the ballot and voting for the president of the United States and the vice president and a senator and a congressman, make your voice be heard. That's all. That's all. It's not whether or not you're in love with the candidate and you're going to invite them over for dinner <laughs> about whether or not it's the candidate that you believe is moving us closer to the will of God for the society. And that's what, that's what it's all about folks, you know? So, you know, um, I, I implore you, uh, next opportunity you get to vote. Some people get an opportunity, I think is it in Georgia, in one of these states, they're doing a runoff mm-hmm. uh, 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 for, for Congress or the house. Yeah. And you still have time to register for that vote now mm-hmm. coming up. Um, yeah. and, and participate in that runoff vote. So if you're not registered, go register to vote. Make yeah. your voice be heard. Make your voice be heard. Make your voice be heard. Amen. That's it. That's it. Make your voice be heard. And there, you know, there's so many, so many ways to do that. It's just that we don't want to eliminate the opportunity when it's presented before us. And guys, we have to recognize when there's an opportunity before us. Um, even to vote is an opportunity to um, have your voice heard, you know, so, and there are many other ways, like I stated, you know, a, a, a great opportunity is when you just let your light shine in the midst of a bunch of opposition, when you right. take a stand and you stand for the word of God, that is letting your light shine. But in this day and yeah. time, guys, we have a lot a lot of things stirring in the atmosphere. Right. And we just have to make sure that um, we're standing in our holy place, in our most holy place. Um, we have to make sure that we're standing in the word of God and, and relying on the word of God and trusting in the word of God with, our, with all of our hearts and not leaning into our own understanding. Right now, it's not mm-hmm. a time, it's not a good time it's to be leaning on your own understanding, but now's the perfect time to be acknowledging the Lord in all of your ways and letting him direct your path, whether it's a trip to the grocery store, we need God to direct us. You know, I need God to direct me when I'm, when I'm, when I'm working, you know, inside of the facility. I don't know enough about a pandemic. I mean, I may forget a few things, you know, oh gosh, let me go back there. 
sometimes I forget my hand sanitizer. I got to go back up the hall and go back up the hall to get the hand sanitizer mm -hmm. and forget my mask. Like I came up the hall without my mask on, but it's the spirit of God. You know, we have to, we go as far as we can in the natural and we trust yeah. God to step in with and put his super on our natural to keep us covered in ways that we cannot cover ourselves. But you won't think to do that if you're not putting God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And then all of the wisdom that we've been talking about and everything else that you need will be added unto you. And I just right, believe right. it. I you know, Cindy, you, you bring reference um, twice now, in fact, three times about us, not just being the salt, but being a light. You know, the, 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 the most effective time for a light to shine is in darkness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, it, it seems like it shines the brightest when it's dark. And um, these have been some very trying times, some very dark days here in the recent past for us. And we're talking in regards to leadership as being all leaders and sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. We're all called to be leaders of sorts. Uh, as you said, to be lights that shine, cities set on the hill. Um, right now, in this dark time in the world, now is the time that we can be extremely effective just by being in alignment with the will of God for our lives. Because people are looking for a light. People are are covered with gross darkness in their lives. You know, they might you might see them walking around and driving all day, but mentally and emotionally, they have dark, they don't know what's going on. They don't know how they're going to make it. Um, they don't understand what their next move is going to be. They're in fear now because of what 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 seems like is going on in politics is not working to their to their desire, to their advantage. I mean, so now they, more, more than ever, they need light. They need light. They need light. The best is like salt. Salt the same way. Yeah. Salt tastes the best when you put it on bland food. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. when you so and so we are the salt. We are this light. And so now is an awesome time for us to lead by example, uh, lead by our faith, and to lead others in the direction that we're going in, which is congruent to the will of God. In righteousness. Once again, we're back there again. So this is what we, this this is the time to shine. That's why I keep saying I'm so excited because yeah. there's so much going on. It's like God is about to show up and show out. I'm trying to tell you because yeah. His light is so bright. It's so it's it, in contrast to the darkness on this earth. Oh man, it shuts it down. And people say, man, it's getting crazy. And people are quoting the Bible verse: men are getting wiser and wickeder. And uh, yep, but God is on the scene. <laughs> And at God the appointed time, he mm -hmm. don't show up. And, and he, he's the glory. He's the glory. And we are the light bulbs. So light up. Get your shine on. Get, get your shine, shine on. on. Get your shine on. I'm <laughs> telling you, it's so important. I mean, even in the midst of that parade, I remember thinking, God, what do you want me to do? And, you know, some cars was passing because I had slowed down and kind of messed up the procession. But when those cars passed, I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, a nice friendly friendly yeah. smile and thinking about being salt and light elgin mm -hmm. you know lady d i was sharing another a similar experience to the one i just shared about being in that procession i was sharing something else um with someone who had an oppositional view um of mine but nevertheless i was ministering to them in regards to what they were going through, despite our views, political views. However, God said, still minister to them about their personal problem. And um, so I did that and, and, and was able to, to speak to the situation and to give some advice. But I remember sharing it with, uh, with Lady D and, and just, just the encouragement that I received from her to, and you know, she just encouraged me, she said, um, continue to be a light to that person, continue to be a light mm -hmm. to that person, invite that person to join us online services. And mm -hmm. as a result of that, um, the person just, just totally, totally blessed my life. And, and their views were so strong, but because I choose to go high, you know, as, as our former first lady would say, when they go low, you go high. And I did not, I had the word of God on my tongue for their situation and the devil. And I remember him trying to say, 
you know, they feel this way and they feel this way about, about us, about you mm-hmm. as a people. God said, put a word on it. And as a result of me, I could have taken the, the racial plate, the racial card, and I didn't. I went high. And for me, high is the word of God, the principles of God. And because I chose to take the high road, I received favor and, and continue to receive favor. I said that to say there are some people in this world that's hurting Elgin, just like you said. Mm-hmm. There are some people in this world that that's lonely. There are some people in this world that have been disregarded by their families, and they they are they're able to bless you, um, which with their natural goods, mm-hmm. and you should be able to bless them with your spiritual goods, you know. Sure. And it's in exchange, and that's why you know I I'm a strong believer in that scripture that says the wealth of the wicked is laid mm-hmm. up for the just. I am a strong believer when the word of God said the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I have always prayed, God, anoint me to be one of the few laborers. You know, if the harvest is plenteous, see, I am not a competitive person. I ain't play a lot of sports or nothing, Elgin. So therefore, I have to go the route where there's a big harvest, but a few laborers. Because if the harvest was plenteous and the laborers was plenteous, I would say, I ain't getting mixed up in that. They too fast for me. They gonna get to the harvest before me because I don't have that competitive edge. But always I have taken a route where there is few. I take on that challenge and I will dominate that because it's not highly competitive. So it's the same way with, and that's just the way I think, Mm -hmm. you know. So other people, I know know some very competitive people. They would be like, I ain't going down there with those few people, ain't no competition. But really, the harvest is plenteous right. and the laborers are few because there are so few people, and I said this on Sunday, who is willing to be a light for the glory of God. There are few people who are willing to say, God, use me, use mm-hmm. me. So busy thinking like the world, so he can't find the laborers for this great harvest, sort of. Mm-hmm. But to our crown family and to our viewers, let you be one of the ones that say the laborers may be few, but I am one of the laborers. God, lead me okay. to the great harvest. Amen. Let everybody else do what they're going to do, but you do you, meaning you do mm-hmm. God's way. And, and remember, we have, you know, it's this, you know, I, I study a lot, you know, and, and I haven't been from Washington, D.C., you know, the emphasis placed on history and political science growing up in school and grade school is a little bit different. Um, I've noticed um, for my son, my youngest son, even both my sons, uh, what they've studied outside of the nation's capital, you know, big, big, big impact, you know. So terms that I've heard early on in my life are still terms that are congruent with who we are in faith today, such as a term that's called dual citizenship. Mm. Dual citizenship. That's me. I'm, I'm in this country, but I'm not of this country. I have citizenship in this country where I can participate in the vote. But I'm also from another country where that my government reigns supreme. I have dual citizenship. I'm a citizen of the United States of America, but my heritage and my inheritance reigns from another kingdom that is not of this world. Mm-hmm. And so because of my citizenship there and all that it offers me and its perks and its privileges, um, there's certain things that I don't have to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not susceptible to. You know, mm-hmm. um, any fear mongering that you do in your country. My country doesn't do fear. Your, your, your country moves and operates off of fear. My country moves and operates off of faith. That's I have right. dual citizenship. That's I have right. dual citizenship. And so then we, 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 once we get that back in our head, that's the, that's the posture of an ambassador, is I'm in your country. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and the vote, because I'm in your country, the vote is going to affect what happens to me kind of sort of when I'm in this country. But the government that I represent is not of this country. And <laughs> so... The government I represent has a different mindset. We, we do things differently. And I'm not going to allow your country to influence that mindset. Mm-hmm. I'm here to influence your mindset. That's and fine. so now, it's like, once again, it's the best time to be a light. You know, keep this in mind, too, folks. Um, you were talking, um, you made a comment about, as an example, uh, racial tension. You know, it's been quite a bit. Um, still some going on today. Uh, I joined the Army in 1995. Um, and um, I joined the Army. I was a little bit older than the average person going into 18. 
And so because, you know, where I was raised, my dad was a former army drill sergeant. I just it came down to boot camp and all that. They couldn't shake me. I was just like, if you can't be worse than my pops, you can't shake me. <laughs> so right. the drill sergeants noticed that early and they made me what's called a platoon guide or platoon leader. Mm -hmm. Normally a platoon leader uh, is one of the, one of the uh, recruits coming in and they're a platoon leader for a couple of weeks of the six weeks of basic training. And by design, you get fired to get someone else an opportunity to do the job. You can get fired for nothing. You got a honey bun, you didn't finish eating your honey bun at breakfast so that you're fired. You're no longer the platoon guy. You, you're the platoon guy next. It was a chance to be a leader, a step up in leadership. So I'm going to racial tension. Some people, folks, remember contextually, it's all they know. It's all they know. Um, they, 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 they're adverse to you because all their life, that's all they know. What am I saying? Well, I had a young man, a young brother, he, um, white Caucasian male. Uh, he was in my platoon. I was responsible for him. And I had 60, I had 60 soldiers I was responsible for. The majority of the platoon was African-American or Hispanic, not white. And so we had what's called KP. Now you watch those old army movies, KP means kitchen patrol. That means you go in a dining room, you clean up the kitchen, you watch, you bust them pots down, you bust them pans down, you clean up. They cooked it, you clean it. And so mm -hmm. we had KP duty, we had kitchen patrol, we marched over there, marched them over there. And on the way back, I'm trying to make this real quick so we run out of time. Apparently um, this particular soldier, uh, white male, who I was his platoon leader, had dropped a little yellow, the little legal pad paper. He had folded yeah. up a letter he was gonna send home to his folks mm -hmm. and uh the letter now they had already been having problems with this boy in our platoon i had to step in a couple of times they wanted to fight him because they felt right. like he was like a little red they felt they felt that vibe and his letter said in the letter it said it was talking about me it says i got this n-word telling me what to do and telling me where to go and this n-word he thinks he's all that and it's just like you said about these ends they this they that and the third blah 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 Man, this joke talked about me so bad, Cindy. Man, I was like, "Yo, we don't, I don't, yo, we don't know who I am, dude. I will go upside your head." That was my right. flesh. That was my flesh, folks. That was my flesh. There we go. Make sure that was my flesh. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, the letter he dropped the letter, and someone found it and turned it into the drill sergeant. The drill sergeant called me to office to tell him about the letter. I'm like, "Oh my goodness." I had a chance to look at part of the letter. I was like, wow, I didn't know this guy even felt this way about me. A week later, um, tensions were still rising, mm -hmm. like the nation, the tensions were still getting, things still getting rough, yeah. tensions still going on. They, here we go, I'm gonna make it relevant for the day. They were marching on Washington and they were rioting in the streets. The tension was rising and rising in that little platoon of 60 people in a little tight bay, little small barracks room. <laughs> it was getting tight. Next thing I know, one night we trying to go to sleep. We all in our pajamas, our little sweatpants and our socks and our little slides. Private James, Private James, you gotta come quick. They about to kill him. They about to kill him. I said, what, what's going on? Now I'm the platoon guy, watch this. I'm the leader assigned for that time to be responsible for the people that I'm there to influence. You're a leader. You've been placed here in time by God to be an influence. There are people who are gonna be the adverse to you. This young man was adverse to me. I go down the room and when I tell you, when I, I'm not, I'm I'm more, I'm more decent size, but these brothers were corn fed brothers out of, I don't know, somewhere, Mississippi, like one guy, he was from Mississippi. I'm about to call his name. Joke was boo bam, solid. He going at the boy. This young man is caught up in the corner of a barracks room. His face was so, he was just standing, he was, he was shook. And I'm talking about women, men of color were in there, Hispanics, and they were about, they had their boots strung together. They were turned there, about to, they were about to go to town on this man. Uh -huh. I'm the leadership based in position to, to, to hear and to carry out the will of God in this situation or the will of the army in this situation. I don't know what came over me, Cindy, but I heard my spirit, I said, oh no, not on my watch. I said it to myself and I jumped in between the young man and the mob. And I said, I don't know what y'all think y'all gonna do tonight, but it's not happening while I'm here. Oh, now this wow. man was averse to me. This young man has said some things about me. He called me an N-word more times at that stage in my life more than I've been called in my entire life. Now, granted, it was a private letter, but he was talking about me. Mm -hmm. He said the letter that he hated me 
he was adverse to me. I jumped in the middle of the situation. And so I did that. And th James, you crazy. You crazy. You know you won't get him too. You know you <laughs> I was like, it's not happening. It's not happening. Well, we get you. I said, we just gonna have to fight. Cause I'm not, it's not, I can't let you do this. I can't let you do this to him. Now we graduated from basic training, wrapping the story up. And um, the young man came to me, we both graduated, came to me um, that day of graduation. And we were all leaving, saying our farewells. And I see him walking to me from across the parking lot, like, oh Lord. He walks over to me and he shakes my hand with tears in his eyes. And he says to me, thank you. He says, and I'm sorry. He said, because growing up, I've never seen a black person in my life. I've never seen so many black people. Every time the most black people I've seen was on TV. Going back to what I said, contextually, people are stuck where they're stuck because by context, that's all they know. Mm -hmm. Don't be so quick to be angry. Be yeah. quicker to be like Christ and be moved with compassion. And understand they just don't know any better. Forgive them, Father. Elder, forgive them. He don't yeah. even know what he's doing. And so you stand in there as leadership, as a light, as a salt, and show the world something different, folks. Yes. Show the world something that they're hungry for. Shine the light in darkness, and the darkness cannot swallow up the light. And once you shine that light, people will see the glory of God in you yes. and remove them something different. That young man and I, we communicate more today than some of my actual family members. We, him and I, we wow. talk all the time, wow. all the time. And so it went from something that was adverse to being a racial situation contextually mm -hmm. to something that when I came in with, with, with an influence that was different, for him to see some of the differences, hey, it's not as bad as these people say. Uh, they're not, it's not bad at all. This guy's cool. This guy saved my life. Yeah. So anyways, I said that because I, 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 I'm concerned um, these next upcoming days, civilly, things are going to be a bit interesting. You know, but don't be moved by people's appearance. Don't be moved by what they say, their bumper stickers, their T-shirts, uh, or, or the way they wrote eyes. Don't be moved by that. You are the leadership on the scene. Don't talk about 40, uh, 40, 40, 45 being bad leadership, and now's your time to be a leader, and you don't want to be a leader yourself. Be good leadership. Shine the light. Show the reputation of the kingdom of God. Be an ambassador so people can see that there's hope for our society, there's hope in our nation, and there's hope right where they're standing because you're there and because God is in you. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Elgin, for sharing that. And I think this is a, a good good way to close, um, just just con um, to continue to be a light and um, despite what you see happening around you. So guys, on that note, wanna thank you so much. Bishop did not get an opportunity to come on but stay tuned. He will be back on Thursday evening. Continue to pray for our bishop, um, for his family. Yes. Just for the body of Christ and for the leaders, our spiritual leaders. Keep them lifted up. And not only that, just, just keep our government lifted up in, in, in our United States of America Amen. and the world. Continue to pray. Amen. It, Something happens when we pray. So I believe God is listening and the angels are listening to move on the behalf of um, the believers. So continue to pray. In the meantime, be safe, stay focused, stay prayerful, and Amen. just stay alert. That's In it. Jesus' name, be blessed, be blessed. Good night, good night, good night, good night.